Hey everybody, I'm going to talk about a new coffee today from Populous Coffee Roasters. They are out of Michigan, uh, Bay City, Michigan. Uh, first time I've had their coffee. Just some cool notes about the packaging first. Uh, on the back here, you'll see they give directions for uh, Kalita, Drip, and Chemex. Um, pretty cool. They also use um, they also use weight, so use 25 grams of coffee for 400 milliliters of water. 400 milliliters of water. Um, I really like that they use the weight. Um, I wish they would have kept with the weight in the water too, but I guess from a consumer standpoint, it's probably easier just to use measurements. So I'm actually surprised that they did weight on the coffee and not uh, volume like tablespoons, because uh, sometimes it's a little bit easier for a general consumer to kind of get into specialty coffee. So I think that's really cool. And they kind of include the three different uh, brewing methods on the back, also very cool. Um, I got 12 ounces uh, from them. Like all coffee reviews that I do, um, I use a core espressos and then I add it to, to um, I do kind of a traditional style cappuccino. So if you're not familiar with what that is, it is not a dry foam cappuccino like you're normally used to seeing. You can think of it as like a six ounce latte that just has a little bit thicker foam, um, but not much thicker than a latte. So it's kind of like a six ounce latte. Um, I've been drinking this coffee for about uh, three weeks, and some of my thoughts are, well, let's get into the coffee itself. So the coffee itself is two coffees, one from Guatemala and one from Ethiopia, a Guji and a Ralito region of Guatemala, if I remember correctly. Um, so a Guatemalan with a, a Ethiopian, uh, vibrant melon and ginger are in the coffee notes. Um, so I also, their, so their brewing method for espresso is also about what I generally do. So for their uh, brewing method, they recommend 18 grams in, 36 grams out uh, of espresso at about 32 to 35 seconds, which is kind of my standard baseline poll. So if a roaster doesn't provide me with the parameters, I will start with about 18 and a half in. Uh, and then go 36 to 42 grams out depending on the coffee and between uh, I will start faster, you know, maybe 20 in the low 20 second 20 second range maybe 24 25 seconds and then I'll try to tighten up the ground push a little longer see if I can get better extraction rates So I just kind of stuck with that because it was already within the parameters that I'm used to using so let's talk about if this is a coffee I feel like you should spend your hard-earned money on. Um, if you're new to espresso, I feel like this would also be a good one for you. Um, it is bright and acidic, and if you're not familiar with acidity, acidity doesn't mean uh, sour or uh, bad tasting. Acidity we, in the coffee world we talk of as sweetness. So a good balance of sweetness, but yet also chocolatey and and kind of well-rounded so it would be very easy to work with and as long as you stuck within those parameters you couldn't mess it up too bad and have a terrible cup of coffee so I think it allows for some fluctuation so you don't have to have your shot perfect in order for it to taste good uh, so I think that's a benefit so if you're new to espresso definitely check out this one uh, from Populous and they have two espresso blends this is the proper espresso so be sure to check that one out uh, they have another one I don't remember what it's called but I got the proper espresso blend um, the other thing about it is that for me, uh, w when I drank it, it kind of, hit, it's like the roast was developed almost a little bit too far. So it started to, on the back end, just kind of have a little bit of the caramelized sugar flavor. So if you think of a traditional dark roasted coffee, it has that ashy kind of burnt taste. Um, if you're familiar with a big roaster um, on the East Coast, La Colombe, their coffees kind of have that flavor. It's chocolatey, but yet kind of roasty and ashy. It's this kind of weird flavor profile. Um, I don't really like the caramelized sugar flavor. I would have per prefer the coffee to be just slightly more acidic, i.e. sweeter. Maybe taste the Ethiopian a little bit better. Doesn't say if the Ethiopian was washed or if it was a natural. Um, but even with a washed, you can still get really fruity Ethiopians. I've actually had some washed Ethiopians that were um, far fruitier and sweeter than some naturals that I've had. Uh, but yeah, it just at the end, no matter how I'd kind of dialed the shot in or even kind of adjusting it, it always kind of had this roasty kind of tinge on the end. If So if you like that, if you like that kind of caramelized sugar flavor, it gives you that more heavy acid or heavy 
roasty, toasty kind of note, um, this would be a coffee for you. So again, if you're used to drinking dark coffees and you want to kind of step into the world of specialty coffee, this also might be a great one for you because it does kind of still have that remnants of that roasty caramelized sugar flavor, which I'm not really a big fan of. Um, it's just not for me. I like coffees to kind of speak for themselves and not to have those have the roast start to kind of predominate the flavor. And here it was just on the end. So, you know, maybe one or two degrees different in the, the roast development, and it might be really kind of more cocoa-y and chocolatey and, and sweet, as opposed to uh, the kind of this caramel or sugar or roasty flavor. Uh, looking at when I split, I use a pill splitter and I always split the coffee beans in half and look at the roast development. And the development on here was really even. So every bean that I cut, when I kind of just sampled throughout three weeks, I was just kind of pulling out randomly. The development was spot on. I mean, it, it was even top to bottom, no toasting, it didn't look like a steak or it was kind of baked on the outside and on you know, medium rare in the middle, or the opposite where it's like really baked on the inside, a lot of moisture loss, dried it out really fast on the inside, kind of overbaked the inside of the coffee and then the outside was underdeveloped. None of that, so um, obviously a quality roaster that kind of knows how to develop a coffee. Uh, but again, for my pr favorite flavor profile, just kind of not my, wouldn't be my go-to espresso. But again, if you, I think the best thing about this is if you like those kind of toastier or uh, darker coffees and you're just stepping into specialty coffee this might be a good one because it kind of has that remnants of caramelized sugar on the end that might be something you really get into um, so again just another espresso review from Populous Coffee in Bay City Michigan so definitely check them out if you're interested this is the proper espresso blend um, I do these reviews about every three weeks I get a new coffee kind of drink them taste them and then so I can kind of give you uh, my opinion of what I think are great coffees so again, always coffee, pedal, repeat. And if you like these videos, uh, click the notification button, the little subscribe, that is subscribe, little bell notification. And then anytime I do a espresso review, you kind of learn about new uh, coffees that are out there and uh, maybe find something you might like yourself. Also, if you are interested in finding interesting coffee shops in your area, I have a free coffee map. It's called overacupofjoe.com. So you can go there and find amazing coffee shops and roasters all over the world. And I'm always looking for great coffee shops to add to the map. So if you have any suggestions, please uh, let me know of any shops that maybe I should add to the map. So again, copy, pedal, repeat. We'll talk to you guys later.